When we talk about exposing to the right, it means increasing the exposure that the camera wish to give as far as we can, but without doing irreparable damage to the highlights. Why do we do this? It's because editing from lighter tones towards darker tones is far better from a quality point of view, rather than going from the dark tones to the light. Now, over many years, I have found that exposing to the right gives me greater flexibility with those sliders. My editing is speeded up because I'm not always fighting noise. And the overall quality of the image is better. Now, within some limits and using noise suppression, along with AI masks, we can consider exposing to the left in some situations, something we've rarely done in the past. We're going to expose more for the highlights, but without allowing the shadows to block up too much. Where is the line? Let's try it and see. I'm going to begin here by going to the auto setting, using that as a bit of a preset. From there, I'm going to raise the exposure because I can see my picture is still a bit too dark. And even now, I hope you can see that there is a little bit of noise in the image, particularly in the sky. I would be picking up my white balance and clicking into the C to correct that white balance. And now we've got our global parameters more or less done, unless of course we want to have a look at the effects. They could be a little bit of clarity, mid-tone contrast. We could decide we'd like a little more color in the vibrance. But I think I've probably taken this as far as I can in the global editing. What I now need to do is to turn to strategic editing via the masks. Now as this image spins round on screen, you're almost certain to notice some difference to it, particularly in the sky on the extreme left by the horizon. What I'm doing here is just trying to speed up the process so the video doesn't get too long or boring. So I've opened up another version, my final version of this image, where I'd completed my global editing. So now we're going to switch to strategic via masks. But one thing we could do, if I zoom in a little bit again, somewhere up to about 100%, if I drop down the grain, we're going to see quite an improvement. I think that's worth accepting. See if we can work forward with that. Right click and I'll reset that back into the view. So let me open up the masks. I've got all of them named and I've got them all turned off. So I began the process, as you can see here, with a linear gradient on the left. It's quite obvious that the left side of the image is a bit weak. So I'll just turn that on, but I'll mouse over and you can see the sort of gradient that I dragged on. Pretty basic stuff. The next one is a linear gradient on the right. Let me just move my image a little bit so you can see it. And when I turn that on and mouse over, there you can see what I chose to darken just a little bit there. The next was just bringing the base down a bit more. Control zero will fit that on screen. And as I turn on the linear bottom gradient, there you can see what I chose to do. I'm darkening the base because hopefully when I darken the sky at the top, we'll have a nice balance between the two. Next, as you can see, is the sky. I'll turn that mask on and mouse over it. And you can see I selected the entire sky there. Whenever we do this, there's a limit to how far we can go generally. I almost always find I need a gradient as well, and that's what you can see above here. So if I turn that one on, you can see it just darkens that left-hand corner to match everything else. Once again, a linear gradient was used. Now I'm turning to my brushes, because here I'm brushing the highlights. These are the highlights 
on the left, just above the horizon there. There's not too many of them. You may have difficulty seeing them, but every little bit helps. And finally, the white water done with a brush. And there you can see the hint of that overlay where I've made those adjustments. So at face value, and looking at the image as we're viewing it here, it looks pretty good considering we began the process two stops less exposure than the camera wished to give. Now I'm going to address the noise issue before I open this up into Photoshop. So going down to my Detail tab, let's click the Denoise. I think I'll select a little bit of the sea and the sky over on the right. Somewhere over here, let's click there. There we can see the before and after. We've got a setting here of 59. Let me return that to the default. So when I click, you can see the noise in the image. When I lift my cursor, you can see the noise is fixed. Let's take a look around here at the edge of the rocks. So there you can see the noise and the noise removed. It's looking pretty good. I don't think I really need to go any higher than 50. So I'm going to click Enhance. It's going to take a couple of minutes to do this. And then I'll open it up into Photoshop. The denoise that I ran on this image in Adobe Camera Raw did take quite some time. My guess is it's the fact we're working on a 45 megapixel image, the fact that it was shot with two stops less exposure. So my guess is that the denoise had a bit of work to do, but it's well worth the wait. So let me zoom in a little bit and we can take a look at the image. It's looking pretty good with regard to quality and noise, despite the image we started with. It's always fun to see how far we've come as we compare the original image with our completed one. It's also very interesting to see how our exposure latitude has been made much wider with the technological advances of Photoshop and of course Lightroom if you're a Lightroom user. Exposed to the left when we need to, but with few, if any, compromises. I'll see you next time.